Okay, so my name is Dave Pacheco. I'm an engineer here at Joint. Um, before I get to what I really want to talk about, I, I got to talk about one of the prerequisites, which is a service that we released about a month ago, which is called Manta. How many people here have heard of Manta? Okay, pretty good number. <laughs> anybody actually, how many people actually used it? Okay, cool. Um, I'm going to talk about what is what I think is probably the most useful and innovative use of Manta to date. Um, but before we get there, I'm actually going to I'm just going to demo it a little bit. For, if you don't know what it is. Um, Manta is a, an internet-facing object store. So um, it, it's a thing where you, you make puts over HTTP and you store arbitrary bytes of data. You can make gets back, you can do ls. It looks and smells like a file system. And we built a, a set of command line tools that made it look especially that way. Um, so uh, all, all objects in it, they, you know, they look like Unix paths. Um, everybody has their own namespace here. Like, you know, mine's just app store. You know, MLS-L looks just like MLS-L. I think you're, you're getting the metaphor, probably. Um, just as a, another example, I've got a um, kind of a classic you know, dumb this example. I'm going to start with Shakespeare. Um, I've got a bunch of text files in here. Oops, it's actually another character to keep. Um, and so the thing, one of the things that makes Manta different from other object stores um, is it has compute as a first-class citizen, and in particular, arbitrary compute. So um, in addition to just sort of the put get operations, you can also say run this program on these set of objects and, give me, and show me the outputs. So I'm just going to do a, a simple example here. Um, let's see, end job. First thing I'm actually going to do, I'm going to find all text files in there. This should give me, yeah, just like fine. I'm going to pipe that into something called mjob create. It's going to be a map job. Um, and I'm going to do, what's a word in Shakespeare that would be in some place, maybe not all of them? Wherefore? Yeah. Wherefore, that's good. You wherefore. wherefore. What's that? You wherefore. That exactly. That should be actually, I assume that's an all of them. Um, <laughs> you wherefore without the trailing E. <laughs> Is that right? I'm not sure. I'll do it like that. Um, let's just try that. So that just submitted a job to Manta. It had four errors. Remember, grep returns an error if it doesn't find the thing. So that's oh, actually that not. means wherefore had an E, one of those errors. <laughs> that is possible. Um, so I'm going to grab the outputs of that job. There's a whole bunch of them because what I just did was I just ran grep over like 40 different objects. So I have 40 different outputs. So I can get all of them here. There's all the uses of that. Oh, well. Looks like there's any. Um, <laughs> so, but now, so, so uh, a better example if you actually wanted to use this is grip also takes a flag that's dash cap h, uh, which says always print the file name. And I'm also going to add something. Um, so in Manta, we make the the file that you're or the object that you're operating on looks just like a file, um, but the file the path in the file system isn't exactly the same as in Manta. Um, object name, because not everything can just be like dropped down in the file system. If your username was var, that wouldn't really work that well. So um, you can actually tell grep, hey, the label for this thing is actually something else. So there's a, there's an environment variable, let's do that. And then I'm going to add a reduce phase of this, which is just cat, which actually just combines all the outputs together. And dash o means not only wait for it to finish, but also dump all the output out. It'll take a little bit longer to actually combine all the results. So this is actually done is this is basically finding all the locations where these objects are stored, running grep on them, sending them back in the object store. Oh crap. I'm gonna do that again with that. <laughs> so this is basically just telling grep this is basically telling Manta, ignore the output of this, don't consider it an error, because it's not actually an error. I just only want the output that actually worked. Um, this is actually I'm just doing this because the command line tool doesn't print the output if you don't do that. And so now we have a, a list of like for each file what, what the things were that are found. So anyway, just kind of a dumb demo of how Manta works or what Manta is. Um, does that make sense? Questions about that? Does the reduce step happen on one machine or on many? It Manta? does. Yeah. Um, Can you stream the results back? Can you stream the results back? Uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, as they're coming in. So we do everything on a on an object by object basis, but you can chunk up the objects and you can get you can start getting results soon. But you kind of do that yourself. Like if they don't fit in memory. 
for example, yeah. You can also do multiple pipelines of reducing the classic thing where you do, you know, you have map and then, a re you know, 10 reducers and then one reducer at the end. So that in that sense, the reduce step is running across multiple systems. Um, okay, now, important question. Who here has played Mario Kart 64? Okay, everyone over there I know. Actually, kind of a lot of people. Um, so if you came to join... In, Who here believes the best Mario Kart 64 player? Hey, hey, hey! So, up. All right, we gotta have a tournament later. Oh, oh! Um, <laughs> so we gotta do it. Another hand We gotta do it. Um, so, if you came to join it, basically any other day, right where you're sitting, we have these couches. This projector is, spends most of its time projecting Mario Kart 64. I don't actually know where it went. That, that we do a lot of Mario Kart 64. Um, for those who didn't, who don't do Mario Kart 64, do you guys play other video games in your office? No, it's just Mario Kart 64 and the people who don't play the game. <laughs> well, so we've played a lot of it, and you get to the point where I think this will resonate with enough people where um, you, know, you ask questions like, you, you start to learn the quirks of the game. Like, you know, does, the, um, does it matter if you power slide? Or does it matter how many times you fall off the track? How many times you get hit by a bomb? How many times you slip on a banana peel? Um, I mean, obviously these things matter, but, but to what extent do they determine the winner? I have a personal hypothesis that the first lap doesn't matter. Nobody believes me, maybe I'm wrong, I haven't actually answered that question yet, but um, that's my claim, I kind of want to actually test it out. So we're always sort of hypothesizing like, you know, I, gee, I wonder, if only we had the data to make these decisions. Is there a way we could actually collect this data? Well, um, we decided to, we would try and do that. So I went on Amazon and bought this thing that's like 30 bucks, and what it is is it takes RCA from the N64 and plugs into your Mac and saves a screencast of whatever you're doing with Mario Kart, or you know whatever's coming into it, into a movie <laughs> file on your laptop. Um, and then we wrote a program that would basically use that for FEMPEG, pull out all the frames, try and figure out what's going on, and um, and actually like you know compute some of this stuff. Is this why my teacher's not doing? <laughs> no, it has nothing to do with that. That's exactly right. That's exactly what it was for. Um, so, um, I, I meant to play this when I started talking about Mario Kart, but I forgot. But if you haven't actually seen it, this is the game. Critically, this is a multiplayer game. So multi That's right. Multiple players play the same. That's right. I, I, sh I really should have explained. So Mario Kart, I'm playing right in the middle of the It's a, it's a, you know, four players can play at a time. It's a racing game with weapons. Really pretty basic, you know, really pretty juvenile. Like, I'm going to throw shells at you, and I'm going to pass you, and then you're going to do the same to me. And then we're going to have trash talk about it. That's what we do. Um, <laughs> So we, we built this thing, and what we have here is Cartlytics. So you go to cartlytics.com. <laughs> um, does that need to be bigger? Looks like I can be bigger. You see we've imported 230 races. This is actually, I mean, that's a, about a year's worth of data. We've gone kind of on a, a lot of races. A year's worth of Yeah, a year's worth of playing. Um, not not continuous. Yeah. Um, we have a list of popular tracks. So what this thing actually does is it takes the frames out and figures out um, what track are you on, what characters are in each box, and what the position of each player is at that time. There's a one, two, three, or four. Back to the uh, video here. See, there's a one, two, three, and four in each box. There's a character, um, and then it figures out the track. And that's basically, I think, all we have right now. I, I say we is in the royal we. I think I was the only one actually crazy enough to actually work on it. I feel like we, we did talk about it as a team, and we did a lot of design as a team. And then it was like, okay, now I'm going to go like you know do this stupid thing for a weekend. But um, Like build Mantip for Exactly. True or false? True. true or false? Absolutely true. So it actually is sort of the perfect use case for Manta because you run, you have all these videos, you need a place to put them, so you stuff them all in Manta, and now you just run a job over all of them. And instead of running it on your laptop, where you've got four cores and it would take me upwards of a day to run it on all these videos. I run it on Manta and it takes five minutes. Um, it, it, was, it is actually literally that. And it actually, you know, not that the, this use case is obviously kind of stupid, but it actually makes kind of a big difference because if I'm working on changing something about the algorithm the way it's matching a certain thing in the frame, it, it matters a lot if I can actually get the output over all the videos in five minutes instead of a day. And that actually is what the difference was. Um, Let's see, what, what else have we got here? So we can do full paycheck back paying joint for your What's that? <laughs> Approximately. Um, has, and the other question is, has anyone here, are baseball fans used baseball reference? I was, I was sort of originally trying to sort of go on that kind of a model here, so everything's supposed to be clickable. So you, you can click on Luigi Raceway, and you can see all the races that have ever been played on, you, on Luigi Raceway. They've been who's the top five. This is not sorted by anything. 
I don't think. How no, it's not actually. How do you user? How do you know who was playing? Then, so the users are over here. How do you know the, the user ID on the right hand side? Oh, side? yes, good question. That is manual. Thank you. That, there's no magic there. So the, the input to this thing is you upload the movie file. It goes through all the races and says, okay, you had these six races on these tracks. Who was player one, two, three, four, and you play? And you go enter that. <coughs> Don't you guys always play as the same characters? No, actually, so we, we would like to. Good, good question. Don't we always play as the same characters? It's actually extremely contentious because everyone wants to be Yoshi. And so we have to, we have like a random number generator and we have to <laughs> <laughs> How do you guys decide to where to go to lunch? Um, I'm not gonna answer that question. So, let's see. So when you click on an actual race, it was important to me building this for some stupid reason, that um, you should be able to prove what the program is doing. So there's no like, you know, oh, this thing just made that up. So one of the things it does is, it, so it produces the transcript of the race. I wish, I'm gonna shrink it. <laughs> I'm gonna shrink it down so you can see the whole thing. What it's basically doing is it's saying, okay, this is what time I think the race started. Here's where I'm deciding what place everyone's at. Because it doesn't really make sense in the first microsecond of the race to say so-and-so is in first place. Um, then it says what happens. Wario passes Peach, Peach passes Wario, Peach passes Toad, etc. Um, <laughs> screenshot for each one. So it's like there, it's right there. You can't argue with that. Right. <laughs> and of course you have the actual video of the race here, so that's kind of cool. Um, one of the questions that we had, so we also named certain phenomena in the game after people that, I think the people generally coined the term um, as applying to them. Um, one of them was a key thing, which is a situation where you go from uh, first place to fourth place in less than five minutes. <laughs> and the question is like, how often does this happen? Does this happen to Keith all the time? Um, <laughs> so, so you can actually answer that from the little data that we already have. Because, um, and on the front page, we have a list of all of the key things. <laughs> and it's like, what time is this? Here? It's like, this is actually supposed to, you know, should be all of them. Um, this is not normalized over, you know, some people have played more races than other people, so it's not actually normalized over that. So I don't actually have the answer right in front of me, but it, it was kind of cool to be able to have these hypotheses about the game and be like, let's actually test it and see if that's actually true. Um, we still have a lot more data to gather. I know Adam's really interested in weapon data. Everyone always knows the fourth place person is always getting stars and lightning, and the first place person is getting a banana peel. But what's the actual distribution of that? Is that really true? It certainly seems true. What's the distribution? I haven't done it yet. Um, that's all I got. <laughs> Questions? Yes. Does that just store the uh, kind of intermediary results? Um, yeah. So when you feed it up uh, something you do, it will store the output in itself and it later? That's right. So I, of course, forgot to talk about you know how, how it actually uses Mantis. So obviously it runs on all the video files. It produces a JSON file which summarizes what happened in the video but also includes a file that has all the start times of all the races in the video. And then there's a separate job that runs over that and produces web quality, smaller videos for all of them. If you want to play it in your browser, you don't want to download two of the next to watch this one video, of course, right? So, um, so we're using Manta to, to run over those as well. And all of the data that gets stored back in Manta, there's a second, uh, a third job that goes over all the JSON files for each video, um, combines them into one giant JSON file that the client then downloads when it starts up and just has all the data. So all of your statistics are produced from that one file, so you have like a consistent view so you can correctly aggregate all your data? That's correct. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Um, is this an NSA tracking application? It might be. <laughs> um, so it's actually a very good application to run. It's very cool. Um, have you tried it on other things that are actually like in real life? Even less right. useful. <laughs> well, you can, let's say you can track, you know, the pretty girl who comes to the office at around like, you know, 9.30. And, yeah. you go, and you want to find out which floor she goes to. That's, that's a fair point. So, um, <laughs> turns out, so we, we talked a lot about the algorithm for doing this, and we talked about doing fancy computer vision stuff. <coughs> the algorithm behind this is really stupid. It takes advantage of the fact that it's basically a 2D game, and you're in a 3D world, but all the objects are really 2D. So like, if you want to know what character is in this, in this box, well, there's only eight possible, there's literally eight sets of pixels that could be in that box, and we just do a match of like, which one is the closest one. So it's, that part of the algorithm is not that generalizable, although the rest of the pipeline, I guess, could be if you had other sources of video and some other way to process it. Oh, and one more question. Uh, this uh, yeah. application, you had to write an application that would decode this and everything. Yeah. Did you yeah. store that application on your Manta file system 
and then did the did your did your script automatically pick it up and run it there? Yeah. So good question. Is that is the the actual program that runs on this in Manta itself? And it is by the time you actually run the job. You know, it's a regular cart, uh, GitHub project called Cartlytics, um, and you can download it, type make or whatever. Um, so what I did was I ran that in. We have a thing called M login, which basically drops you into a Manta zone, a Manta compute zone, but with an interactive shell. I did the git clone, make, threw it in a tarball, threw it up on Manta, and then all the jobs basically download that, extract the tarball, and then run the program. So that's how the pipeline works. And that's kind of, that's the idiom that we've been going with in terms of figuring out how you get your compute into the object store. Typically, you could uh, basically have any kind of uh, like that's Yep, and so the, the zone that you get dropped into is a standard um, SmartOS zone with all of our package store packages already installed. So so, for example, this uses uh, FFmpeg and the, all the like 50 libraries of that, which change every single point release. Um, it, it uses that, and there's no anger there. Um, but yeah, it, that's, <laughs> <laughs> that's sitting in the image already. Yeah. Does it do any? Yeah. Does it do any optimization on keeping the data in memory? A little bit. Um, honestly, I wrote that part kind of a while ago, but it it tries to. Um, How do you sort of dance our code? Oh. Oh, 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 man. That's a much better question. I was like, uh, <laughs> does, does Manta try to keep the data in memory? Well, so Manta's running a Lumos, and so we've got, and, and everything's stored in ZFS, so we've got stuff in the ARC, so, which is the, the file system cache. So if you just put this object into the object store, it's probably going to be still in memory. In terms of like going from map to reduce, um, it's kind of a, it's sort of similar. So we actually go through the object store right now, but that's an implementation detail. But you're actually saving something into the object store and fetching it in the new space. So in that case, it actually should be a VRAM all the whole time, but you're still taking some network costs. And so if you are developing the file system rather than VM pages, rather than the ARC itself, mm -hmm. when you do compute and it needs memory to do the computation, you would push out the this space? If we needed to, uh, if we needed to, we would, but uh, in general, the, the systems are provisioned with enough VRAM, but that's not commonly the case. If the ARC grows and shrinks with the, available, with the free memory on the system. Um, the, the compute zones are allocated in an amount of DRAM, but not all the DRAM on the system. So it's, um, I think, actually, I, I don't know that we've actually looked at it, but I guess I would expect the ARC to sort of settle on a certain size and it wouldn't generally get a lot bigger or a lot smaller as work would have operating on it. I would encourage you to help us find the edge. Yes. <laughs> That's what it doesn't whether it's real time or uh, close to real time. Or That's right. So, good question about real time. It's actually not really related to Manta. But one thing I've wanted to do is take the output of this thing, <laughs> pipe it directly to Cartbit, and which is the program that produces the output, and then pipe that to Mac OS A. And then you actually have like a transcript of the race. And then you, then you can replace that with we record all of our own taunts, and it just plays the right one at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, so I mean, Manta is clearly an, an object store, but it yeah. also does compute. What are the, the big use cases you're aiming for that are different from a uh, traditional MapReduce system like Hadoop or something like that? So that's a good question. Um, for one, th that's a pretty broad question. Um, probably want to talk offline about some of the details. There, there are a lot of differences between it. For example, I think it's harder to run a Hadoop cluster on demand in the cloud. You can spin up a Hadoop cluster, but you have to like spin up instances of all the things you want to go do. Right. With Manta, you're actually just saying, here's the computation I want to run, and here are the objects I want you to run it on, and here's how the data flows through that pipeline of mappers and reducers. And the system kind of figures out how many mappers should you have, and how should I funnel the data between them, and stuff like that. So I think there, there's kind of that advantage there. Manta can also be uh, a store of record for the actual data. That is, you can take all your log files from whatever, upload them directly into Manta, and that's the only place they ever live. You don't move them somewhere. Um, in order to compute on them, because there's nothing that you would do on it that you wouldn't just do in Um So those are kind of two somewhat different things, but um, they're overlapping for sure, but I don't think they're exactly the same kind of use case, if that makes sense. You also can do arbitrary, much more easily arbitrary compute on, on Manta. Yes, yeah, so the primitive in Manta, as you saw, is the Unix shell. So you can run a Java program on that if you want, but um, if you don't want to, if you want to run grep or awk or whatever, then you can just use that, which I think is, is easier for certain types of things. For example, if you're doing image transcoding, I'm sorry, image conversion or video transcoding, <laughs> these tools are already there. Just use them. You don't have to write a job program. Cartletics would be excruciating. Right. It's really impossible to be excruciating. Yeah. And, and Cartletics, of course, we know it's the purpose of humanity. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Certainly Manta. Certainly Manta. Yeah. I mean, the fact that Manta might be useful for someone else, it's like, well, that's right. That's a bonus. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah that's you can't have Yoshi. Exactly. <laughs> and the cost part. The cost part. So I didn't, so let's see, I didn't run, I wasn't very careful about the numbers, but I, over the weekend I was rerunning on all these things, I was rerunning all these jobs, and I think it boiled down to like 92 cents or something for, for, for a full run of all these jobs. Because like, the storage is basically S3 prices, so you know, thankfully Amazon has turned it down prices for everybody, so essentially yeah, on the order of 8 cents per day a month. And then compute is, is um, what is it, uh, 40 millicents per second. Um, with oil down by 14 cents per hour. Uh, uh, if you were running a job, it takes an hour. And that's per, um, you know, per unit, sorry, that's per uh, zone for us. It's the amount of parallelism you get. So when I was doing the numbers, I think it worked out to be like 26, I used 26 hours of compute time, but I did it in five minutes because it made it totally parallelized. It. So, uh, so it's 14 cents an hour over, you know, multiplied by whatever the parallelism was. But it worked out to be what I thought was a pretty reasonable number. That's right. Yeah, so yeah. for mappers, for reducers, that's still something you can say. And you're going to basically object based parallels. So if you have one gigantic object, that, is going to, that object is going to live on, and you said that the, the replication level that to two, then that is going to live on at most two machines. And you can spin a multiple jobs on that, but this all, that those will all be on, the, on those machines. If you, if you frame your object smaller, they'll be spread out um, over the, the, the mantle cloud. That's right. So the, the, part, the control over parallelism that you have is, is through the object, right? But the other thing is, you know, you have all the CPUs available to you. So we have, we have caps for fair sharing, and we have caps so that you know you don't own the whole box. But we let you use as much of the boxes as available. So you can also just run tons of threads on them. Okay. Cool. All right.